I'm Brendan Wagner. I'm the restoration coordinator for the Rondout Never Sink Stream Program. We're a program of the Sullivan County Soil and Water Conservation District, funded and supported by the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Our mission is the ecological management and restoration of the rivers and watershed that feed into the Rondout and Never Sink reservoirs. And these reservoirs are part of the largest unfiltered water system in the U.S. and they provide over a billion gallons a day to 10 million residents of New York City and the Hudson Valley. The water is disinfected and treated prior to use, but clay particles that erode from the stream banks have a negative impact on this disinfection process. So our work is focused on preventing erosion, restoring stream processes, and mitigating flood impacts. Traditionally, the engineering approaches that we've taken to managing river systems have created a lot of problems. They don't take into account the form and process of natural rivers, of pools and riffles, access to floodplain, sediment transport, and riparian vegetation. They often resort to hard armoring techniques to fight the natural tendency in the stream rather than working with it. So our program is focused on using natural channel design, bioengineering, ecological restoration techniques for management of our streams. We're, we're really fortunate to have a really healthy ecology in our watershed with limited amount of disturbance and invasive species. So we really work hard to protect that ecological character and all the work that we do. And that starts by collecting seeds from the trees right here in the watershed that we grow out in our own organic nursery. This is our native organic bare root nursery. We grow our trees and shrubs from the seeds that we collected right from the watershed here. One of the things we did setting this up, we went out into the forest, into many different types of forests that are in our watershed, collecting the fungal duff and that mycelial material from the forest floor and use that to inoculate the wood chips and the roots of our trees here. So from the time they germinate, they're just surrounded by that entire web of life that they've co-evolved with for millennia, really, and they go out into the river floodplain, this newly created ecosystem, and they're gonna be more at home with the partners that help them grow. The gray birch, super important uh, pioneer species, this is what was really gonna naturally come into those early disturbance habitats and can grow really fast in a poor soil, and this will get above the deer pretty quickly in a growing season or two. These are the red oaks, these are one of my favorite that we grow in here because these were collected from the biggest, oldest red oak in Claryville. In terms of habitat value, calories for animals and also the insect species that feed off of it, uh, it's really hard to beat the oak. Choke cherry, red maple, black cherry, poplars and elderberry, yellow birch. Uh, yeah, so the showy mountain ash, it's something I've never seen at a commercial nursery before, but we found it in our watershed. We bring it in here to propagate, and we bring it right back out there into the floodplain. This is like a cultivar reservoir where there's a couple different cultivars of uh, the native black elderberry uh, that we're using. They have bigger, a little bit bigger berry, a little bit better wildlife food medicine quality on that. Yeah, Aronia melancarpa. These are like ultimate antioxidant plant food medicine, um, wildlife people. This is this is good for everybody. <laughs> This nursery is kind of the foundation of the, the ecology and the, the life that we bring back to the river. Once the machines are done, that's when the life really comes back and this is where all that life gets to start. A lot of the native edibles are really good, of course, for the wildlife, but also bridge the gap and help the, our streamside landowners connect more to their landscapes. We're standing on the top of a 60-foot landslide right now in Ladleton on the east branch of the Neversink. The slope started to erode again in Irene in 2011 and has been continuing to fail ever since. When this glacial material gets into the water of the river, it becomes very turbid. 
It turns the water cloudy or turbid, impacting its ability to be used for drinking water supply in the reservoir downstream. So with our river management techniques, we can prevent the turbidity pollution from entering the water system, and we can increase habitat and the ecology, have an ecological benefit uh, to our watersheds as we manage them. So by using our natural channel design reference reach data, we're able to tighten up the channel, uh, put in a deep pool and a, a tighter riffle that can move the sediment through as with the storms. And we also stabilized the base of this landslide and then seeded it with a special landslide mix that can take the full sun drought tolerance and low organic matter that we're seeing on the slope and get some rooting into this material and stabilize it vegetatively at the top and mechanically at the base. As the water comes around the bend, you can see the effect of the root wads deflecting that water, pushing it away from the soil on the bank and back towards the center of the stream, keeping that deep scour pool off to the side of the bank. And then again, above the root wads, we have layers of soil lifts that are bioengineered with native willow shrub cuttings that go right into there. Uh, stabilize roots into the soil of the bank and have uh, vegetative protection for the face of the bank. So by tightening up the river channel uh, to provide for the better sediment transport, we're also able to add topsoil and grasses and wildflowers and trees and create a, an entire riparian ecosystem that is tied into the streams ecosystem as well. This, this project was built in 2022, and this is the largest project that we've done so far to date. We're able to stabilize large clay sediment banks to improve water quality. We were able to lower the elevation of the 100-year flood and provide flood mitigation for surrounding landowners. And we were able to install a massive riparian buffer on both sides of the stream, adding to the ecology. Three years ago, this was a moonscape. This was just crushed rock gravel, and we needed a soil mixing site for a closed pool project. So we used this as a stockpile area, and afterwards we were able to put in a restored floodplain. This is our, our custom never sink native seed mix and a whole bunch of trees. And three years later, this is like probably one of the most pollinator producing sites on the entire watershed. You have Blue Vervain and Boneset and Monarda, Asters, did Yellow Birch, Gray Birch, Red Oak, Witch Hazel, Red Maple, Sugar Maple, Black Cherry, Choke Cherry. So in there there's six 20 foot by 20 foot boxes that have six different soil types. And we planted nine native trees in the same pattern in each one. And we're trying to figure out which one, which type of soil, which blend, what ingredients grow the best riparian trees. Because we gotta get our trees big and full, fast as possible to get above the beaver, the deer, the voles, everything out here wants to eat trees. So how do we support that growth through healthy soils? By understanding some of the larger forces at play, the frequency of flooding, the natural form and sediment transport of the river, we're able to design a resilient system that really is adapted and working with the forces of nature rather than against it. Thank you.